Oh, Captain, can we find where the treasure be? I see beyond the sea. horse at the end of that interview, right? I appreciate his umbrella hat. Oh, I guess he's still son. injured. This must be very, oh, very soon after. Oh, no, 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 no. My cat's trying to get on the desk. Now, time for my lovely, lovely sonny to get his medicine. There you go. <laughs> go pay it down. There'll be no more horse plague in this household. <laughs> Not like last time. That's a good son. Okay, then. A very good son. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh. All right. Let's get you comfortable and ready for Betty Bye. Now, now, you need all these blankets to keep Is that warm, a house or a stable? Keep the humors, digest the medicine. Yes, you agree with me, of course, you. But now, you recall our agreement, hmm? I, me, get to shower you in physical affection and worldly possessions, while horse, you, get to hear my every woe and finally let me speak my mind. That doesn't really and sound so like a benefit. I am now sitting down. Yep. Oh. Mm. Now, my dearest horse, it's become very apparent that my other sons seem incapable of even the simplest cognitive feat those Rude. Good, good, silly baby ants. Is that, the, the other, for instance. is that really the Marcus best insult he could come up with? Utterly senseless, and then proceeds to go like, how could I have known? Like he couldn't have put two and two together. <clears throat> That boy did not pay attention during the math class I taught in Squirmy. <laughs> a vampire eating another vampire obviously results in one double vampire. <laughs> to know that, that makes me think of the double Yeti in Futurama. This will not be happening to babysit his brain. And he oh, wasn't perfect. supposed to be doing something like that in the first place. He was supposed to interrogate an experiment. Not gleefully I mean, commit he... war crimes and experiment. <laughs> yeah. In any case, <laughs> I was just gonna say he did experiment. What I wanted. If he wanted to torture them, he could have kept it to Mariah Party. My trust has been broken, not his. Why did he say it that way? More, ever since he's been that was weird. Question upon question about the opery. Why do they not understand the dangers such knowledge brings to them? Do they not trust me? Why shouldn't they? I tell them absolutely everything they would ever need to know and nothing else. It's for their own good, horse. You should know this, too. I keep things from you as well. Oh, but it's not like I don't trust any of you. Especially you, my dearest horse. It's just... If I told you all my secrets, your giant brains would implode from the weight, and you'd be hunted for sports in the filthy streets of Norfolk. Oh, no. Or worse, Ipswich. <laughs> and yet... I don't... I don't know the locations well enough to know if they're like real and if they're actually bad. <laughs> no, that's not entirely it, is it? Why neglect you, horse? Why do I keep the deep secrets of my vaunted memory vaults from others? Especially you, children who have not betrayed me. <laughs> is it Oof. Truly because this knowledge is too dangerous to be shared? Is it because I want to protect you? I 
And the only way I know how is to keep you ignorant and placid. Maybe. By creating a self cannibalizing Uruboros. That's possible. You failed to meet my expectations when confronted with trials that you could have overcome if I had just given you the much needed information. What if I did fully bring you into the light? What would you do with the real truth, horse? Would you die horribly to the things hiding in the dark? Maybe. Or would you fall in other, far more sinister ways? Also, maybe. What things actually turn out for the better? Could Who could know? Or... Hmm. Would this action only serve... <laughs> oh, fucking ass bearers. What? Sir Caracas! Be quiet! I'm talking to my horse! What the crap? Oh, well that has completely ruined my train of thought. Neighbors. What was that? I know the concept. What the fuck was I saying, horse? Oh, right. no, gosh. The Von Dearest fits from the top of the Algonquin Club. Poor horse. Now let me set the scene. <sighs> New York, year 1882, the Frasafin had just been invented. And under the silver lace ceiling from the top floor of the Algonquin Club, two swingers by the name of Dietrich to Teller and Horse were cutting up some fucking rug. Dietrich had the sweet honey on his waist, but Horse was heading deep in some of that good spitted shit. Dietrich was about to make some new social security number with his honey. Before he could get any further, the fucking fuzz showed up and started the raid on the speakeasy. So we had to cut more rug. So I hopped onto Horse and we made our way to the parking lot. Thankfully, our ride was impounded there. When I got there, I strapped Horse to the bottom of the bus and I gunned it. I know, I know he said this a minute ago, but I really like the, that he used that they were about to create a new social security number that yeah i like that <laughs> that's that's probably the best innuendo i think i've ever heard there it was just utter nonsense of hopping state lines and making some new ones hey 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 yeah you remember it your brain is humongous rest now my boy papa's here Ooh, wow. Big laugh. I like that they zoomed out and showed someone outside. Uh, Sadi? What is it? Uh, it's time to change your bandages, and I don't think it's sanitary for you to be sleeping with horses. Nonsense! Also, why is. Daily, and my why can't a horse have a real name? Um, I still really don't think you should be out here, though. Uh, horse is sick, after all, and he's been coughing up a lot of... Things. I said I am not going fucking insane! Well, then. Shh, horse. Oh, calm down, calm down, calm down. I will go inside, if and only if you stay out here with him for the rest of the night. The other boy is always jealous of the fact that I bought actual shampoo for horse. You oh, my gosh. Yes! At the 99p shop? <laughs> no! On the black market! <laughs> what? Have you bought a new blender yet? Why would you uh, buy no. shampoo on the but, black market? Uh, Alright. Alright. I'll stay with him until the morning, I guess? Capital old sport! Now be sure to feed him medicine every few seconds or he won't get better. Oh, and make sure to keep him warm with the blankets. Yes, sir, I understand. And, and I make sure to feed him the apples I bought. I will, I will. Good night, horse. <laughs> Just scream very loudly if you need daddy again, okay? Bye-bye, 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 bye-bye. Well. All right. And don't forget to refill his water if he gets thirsty. I get it, I get it. <laughs> yes, sir. Wow. Holy Toledo. I'm still all about that umbrella hat. <laughs> uh, horse. Mate. Uh, how you doing? Oh, no, no, no. Right, okay, okay. Uh, let's get you some of this medicine for coughing, internal bleeding, receding hell. Holy shit, 800 quid? Where does he find the money? <sighs> I'm assuming that's a lot. 
All right, horse. Um, and yeah, he probably didn't pay for it. Now, uh, sir, D wanted me to keep you company. So, <laughs> what's your Died. story, actually? I've heard like seven different accounts from multiple people as to where you came from. Um, uh, Marcus once said Sir D inherited you from one of his mums or dads, whatever that means. But that's a good question. Uh, what does that mean? Pretty cavalier what do y'all think? It. What does it mean? I think he once implied you burst out of his skull like a. <laughs> what? But that might have just been. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> modern mythology in the making. <laughs> ah, right, sorry. <clears throat> well, I guess the most likely story is Reynolds. The old grouch. Who is that? He always claimed you were stolen from an old lady near Horsey Beach. But... Honestly, I'm pretty sure he thought D was the devil even before he got banned from the Arcanum, so I, I don't know. Oh, shit, I feel I'm like sorry, there's I'm stuff I've missed. I think it's that I'd like to know. A second dose. Man, what even is this stuff? Ah, well. Open wide, horse. Here comes the train. <laughs> Ow! Ugh. That is a lot of blood all over Sorry, me. Sorry, I just hit the mic. Just, just stay there, horse. I need to... No. Shit. Fuck. Yeah, I would not be Marcus. okay with all that blood either. Marcus, could you come out to the horse's house? What? Why? He coughed blood over me and I'm Ugh. soaked in it. I can't! Sir D said that he needs to be watched. Father said just come back inside. Horses Marcus, fine. please! The horse is dying! Sheesh. Was that cracking? Please come out now. Okay, fine, fine. I'm coming out. I want to understand Krakus as well. I'm hoping Dang we it. learn about them in the future. Him, her, uh, it, whatever, in the future oh, so episode. The medicine is everywhere. Oh, horse. Oh, little guy. Oh my gosh, I his legs! So oh, oh, how horrifically just... disgusting you are. <gasps> Marcus will be here soon, and I'll see if I can find the other Oh no! <laughs> damn well better be dying, companion. Oh, shit, are you. Yeah. <laughs> just uh, stay with him for a bit. I. I need to go back inside. What the hell happened? Oh, I don't know. It smells like burnt hot dogs and KY jelly. Thanks, What? <laughs> you know, I was actually watching a documentary on the thing, right? It turns out they used a lot of KY jelly and all the special effects, which you wouldn't normally think of, right? But Marcus, actually, you know, I am covered in horse goo. Right, right, right. Just Nobody would want to be covered in horse goo. And, uh, uh, tend to horse. Real messed up, man. Hey, lately. Nice. What are you looking at, horse? <sighs> well, you're not ensanguinated yet, brother. <sighs> Whatever. Maybe there's some epidemic going on. You probably picked this up at the saddle club. You know, Miss Crack. What is the deal with this horse? She has like horse diabetes and horse apnea. And so does her horse. What? Might be mad horse disease or something. I'm sorry, that's horse. Yeah, it is. Oh, Dad's at least serving you top shelf health care. And, uh, oh, let's check your pamper kit. Crutches over. Oh, okay, horse, we got your brush and perfume, uh, gourmet carrots, and, uh, wait, is it? <laughs> Can a horse even have what? that? How? Is that even allowed? <laughs> okay, whatever father is doing, he is absolutely not helping. 
You get absinthe as a cure-all. I get frozen burritos on my bruises and an off-brand alcohol variety pack. How does one even make Veritas off-brand? What is... What is that? What is Veritas? We are Hold on. What is Veritas? A traditional holiday drink made by... Oh, this is someone explaining it. It is a Lithuanian holiday drink, though. Okay, interesting. I've never heard of it before. I don't really drink a lot of alcohol, though. Um, I tend not to like the taste of alcohol, so it has to be like well hidden before I'll drink it. And unfortunately, that is not conducive to uh, other goals of mine right now, so I don't really drink a whole lot at the moment. Sick and in pain. Hell, you know what these are? These are supposed to be crutches because I sprained my ankles and then got them shot <laughs> with a gun. And yeah. despite that, these crutches are indeed just the taped together remains of our stilts. Oh. <laughs> and now he has the goal Why? to force us to sit out here meters from home in this ancient barn in the middle of a oh, it is a barn. Okay. rainstorm. No. Horse, this won't do. We deserve better. Horse revolution, I say. <laughs> we both shall charge our way into the house. We shall boldly strut I into mean... his big room with his big bed and his big couch and with our shared might commandeer it for our own and then demand immediate aspirin. No matter <laughs> how thin our blood is. <laughs> what do you say, brother? Will you lead oh, no. us? Oh, oh gosh. Shit. Oh, okay, damn it all. Where the fuck is the real medicine? This one? Fuck no, this is Adderall. No, those are mine. Okay, <laughs> antipsychotics? No. I'm giggling. I have to take meds for ADD no, as well, no, though. No, no. Uh, got one. Okay, just drink this horse. I really, really do not need you to die right now. You are a ticket to proper pampering. Okay. Fuck. Is that door Good. in the background? You'll be fine, I think. Right. That looks like his silhouette. Should... Where you up? Oh, you mind grabbing me the absent? <laughs> Holy shit! Marcus, help uh. me unload these boars. We won't need to buy American rashers anytime soon. Door! Knock next time. Horse is trying to sleep. What? Horse is clearly awake. No, he's ill with horse plague. Father said so, and he's been forcing us to play midwife to him. Forcing? The door was not locked when I tried to open it. <laughs> yeah, it's not like he locked us in. So he wasn't forcing you to stay here? He was asking forcefully. Fuck, whatever. Just... Go. I am going to get the boars out into the freezer. I was hoping you could help me count them. There are many. Huh. How many? I don't know. Help <laughs> me count them. Well, sorry, Dor, but we're planning an insurgency. <laughs> what? Come now. It will be just a moment. I'm not oh, our perfect. If it was just one gallon of blood, I'd go. But this many? Come on, get serious. He looks to be perfectly not dying at the moment. Well, then maybe you can call Father out. Maybe he should take some responsibility for a change. Assuming he can count, didn't sound like it during his so-called math class he put us through in failing. Oh, no. Remember that? I remember only oh, the lack of fiends in that cursed life. He refused <laughs> to give us the answers to any formula, oh, no. insisting we need to be able to figure them out ourselves. That was the second time I ended up in crutches. Nothing has changed. It is just one of the funny little instants in a long line of painful fuck-ups where we end up suffering this... as pawns in the little game that is his version of reality. Well then. 
Marcus. What door? Are you all right? I don't think he is. Huh? I'm asking if you're all right. It doesn't sound like yeah, it. Yeah, I'm relatively fine. Why wouldn't I be? Because you don't seem like you are. Door? I'm okay. Marcus, please. Just tell me if you aren't. I'm tired of the mental arithmetic that father no doubt goes through to justify his actions. He could have told us specifically what not to do during the interrogation. I mean, that would have been he a help. He could have told us anything at all, in fact. And we could have planned for them. Then, perhaps, my face wouldn't have been planted into the ground like a common turnip by some shit heel. And you know what's worse? He is still not giving us the full scoop nope, on he's what probably not. even is. He hops around the questions and talks about his new Ipswich ham meat. Why would I care? Hmm. Just... <sighs> I mean, I get the frustration there. Example of us having to clean up after Wouldn't you be frustrated? Upon I would be. Synapse spasms that happen to roil around his brain at any given time. One more poorly justified thing we have to deal with. <sighs> Are you unaware of what thoughts go on in father's brain most of the time? Or any of the time? <laughs> but I, mean... I believe he wants what's best for us. And his ultimate goal is to leave us safe. His failings as a parent I can't condone. But his redaction of information when it comes to hunting the supernatural is needed. Needed? The few things that father has confided in me about blanks has left me truly and utterly afraid. But even when it left me as frightened as a British I mean... child, I had valued the insights he had shared with me. We are fighting against creatures that want to seek us out and kill us. Father has to He's deal not with wrong. that fact every time any of us go out for a hunt. Now imagine that fear, but not only applied to our hunts, but every waking moment. I reckon the risk of someone like Camilla, the first vampire, finding out where we live would increase by 400% should we know what he knows. Even now, at this very moment, we cannot know if someone might, in truth, be listening. He's not wrong. I do not ask that you forgive father, <laughs> but I ask that you rekindle your trust in him, Marcus. I believe very, very deep down that he cares more for us than we may ever know. This is actually, like, super reasonable. That's all well and good, Dor, but I can hardly appreciate it when it's buried so deep that I never really see it. He might have good intentions. But if he can't trust me, then I can't trust him. Then don't trust him, Marcus. In the end, the greatest risk is not external. It is us breaking apart from the inside. So, instead of putting your trust in him, put your faith in us as a family. I... Can Dang. Try to do that. Good. Are That's pretty poignant. Yeah, uh, yeah, I said... Try. Don't get your bloody hopes too far up. If you would want, I can watch horse if you would wake a boy and have him help move the boar corpses into the freezer. Sure, Dor. You just got back. I'll and... be fine, Marcus. Go inside and rest your shot legs. Yeah, okay. Th thanks, Dor. No problem at all. You would do the same for me, brother. <laughs> you will feel better, horse. Just give it time. Would you like me to tell you about my day? Well, I awoke at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I still think whoever voices Dora time. would be great at, From like... There, I began my day in preparation first off, at narration. I began by but also ASMR. And fletching my... <sighs> My bolts. After preparations were complete, I took the car He's westward tired. to the Forest of Dean. It took four hours and six minutes until I arrived. From there, 
I waited for some time. Let my senses sense. He's going to put himself to sleep, isn't he? The wilderness. It was calming. It was quite some time until I saw a hog. So I just waited for the majority of the day. <laughs> until I saw one at 6.35 p.m. <laughs> How many of y'all have snorted there. yourself awake? There's Be honest. <laughs> They actually oh. changed the pattern on his hoodie. Oh. Uh, okay. God save the queen! That always works. Oh, must have been a long day. Oh. Fuck. Yes. What, what, what? Oh. what is it? Hello. Yes, what is it? Tell asleep, Gov. That was sinister. So it would seem. I appreciate the awakenment, Captain. Uh, Captain? Yes. Why Captain? Marcus told me you received the formal rank of Captain during your time in the military. Interesting. Well, I have no respect for lobster backs. I <laughs> your prowess in the field. I would think twice before engaging you uh, in close quarters. Okay, so that was actually a funny joke in our TFC clan. Oh shit! Horses medicine! Uh, um, uh, uh... Okay, there you go. Okay. Good, horsey. Good. TFC. I should know that. So Dee told me that horse apparently likes stories? Affirmative, Captain. Okay. Father read to him quite a lot when he was a foal. Having stories read to us is one of our favorite shared pastimes. A bit odd for a horse, but if Dee says so... His brain is colossal. Do not underestimate him. Now, please, tell us a story. Preferably that'd be, one including that CQC encounter. That'd be Team uh, Fortress? Sure, Gov. No? I guess I uh, could tell I you a story from before Marcus and you lot came back round. I'm keen to hear your feats of Arthurian heroism. <laughs> right, so... Honestly, not sure how much either of you know since I haven't really talked about myself with anyone but Marcus and Dee, but... Uh, I was born here in Norfolk. I have... Had parents here as well, that part you might know. Mm. Uh, I have four siblings, brothers, um, one sister. That's a lot this of kids. Not going as I planned, but it's too late now. <laughs> um, uh, I knew that vampires existed before Marcus and Sir D came back to Norfolk. Mm. Uh, I had met one at university. Mm. Huh. A student by the name of Edwin Davies. He was actually pretty well known around the campus. Everyone kind of went to him for money troubles, and his family seemed well off. That was huh. until I... Oh, uh, until I found Sarah, uh, another student, held up in her loft with him. He was feeding Ooh. her while she was asleep, and there was a lot of blood. He, um, had uh, cut her open and was Ow. eating <gasps> her organs. Absolutely foul. Oh, no. You should not have had to see such a thing. Yeah, uh, that's appreciated, Dor. So, I got his attention by yelling at him. Something like, Oi, what are you doing? And he didn't like that at all, so he stepped away I mean... From at me. You yeah, interrupted his mill. Uh, fuck me. Uh, I was terrified. Uh, he had this look on him, like this look. A anyway, I, I saw him. His teeth, his fangs. I, I could see it all. And I couldn't move, but it was, it was different from what Kevin did to us. He took hmm. one step towards and just started to ramble about his disdain for having to feed like that on people. No, like he was trying to excuse his behavior. Then I remember he was a few centimeters away from me and I could smell the iron on his breath. And then he Oof. just looked at me, into me. And then 
Then I saw the knife. But I hit him first. Sarah always had a bat by her door. She was smart like that. And, you know, he that was is pretty smart. Uh, but now he was pissed, and I just started to I bet he was. things at him. Uh, dirty washing, a uh, lamp, uh, coffee mug, whatever. He, he lunged at me. He tackled me out into the hall. I, I was freaking out. I totally lost my cool. I was flailing, kicking to get him off. Uh, he wasn't doing much better, honestly. He was screaming at me about, about his fucking suit oh. covered in coffee and cream <laughs> i remember that i mean i felt like i would have been covered in blood too already the, the coffee never mind the blood stains yeah i just uh after that i uh don't remember much just fight or flight at that point i i think we got up i remember a uh, stabbing pain in my sight in the confusion, we'd meandered from the floor to the hallway window, and and eventually I kicked him. Really, really, really hard for once. He, he went through it. There's an iron fence outside the apartments. He oh. Got he got impelled. Head. Yep. <laughs> uh, the sun didn't rise, but I saw him just fade away. Then, uh, some more things happened that I, I don't want to talk about right now. And after uh, a pretty long time, uh, Sir D came back with everyone, you two included. Uh, Interesting. Dee really helped put some things into context. It gave me some closure. And, and that helped, truly. It, it, it did. It helped me know that it wasn't a person that killed and ate Sarah, I guess. But something else. Something wearing Edwin Davis' skin. Uh, I don't really know what that means for me, though. Uh, I, I genuinely like the bloke. Even up until the last second. Uh, he's going to sleep again. Look at him. Was that too much of a serious story? Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> oh. Right. I, uh, reckon you've heard far worse stories told at bedtime, huh? I'll, I'll just be quiet now. <laughs> Marcus? Oh boy, alright. Uh, Dor fell asleep while watching horse. Should I just leave him, or...? Ask boy if he can cover for you. He should be almost done moving the poor bodies back into the freezer. Wait, by himself? <laughs> Why did he He's start talking like that? Alright, alright, I'll be there in a beckon. <laughs> <laughs> Was he trying to get him right, to do well, that? <laughs> I'll see you later, I suppose, horse. You seem to be doing a lot better, so I feel all right about leaving you with door. Yell if you need anything. And sleeves are so long. to put extra conditioner in your soaps water. Oh, gosh. Uh, it's really watery out. Like Yarmouth Golf Adventure Golf Hill. What? You know what? I should let Dad sleep, I think. He can sleep through it right now. He, he looks comfy. I if you don't mind him staying in your house, Uncle Horse. Uh, I don't know what that means. It is a really nice house, though. 
It's cozy, nice lamps. Uh, I like the wall paintings. Or, wait, is that? Oh, no. Oh, is it blood? Is this your blood? Yep. Oh, else that's a lot. I'm sorry for the swear word. Uh, let me just fix your blanket. Uh, must have fell off when you were drinking your... Wait, is this... Absinthe? <laughs> huh. Bottoms up! Oh my gosh, no! We do not approve of child of uh, underage drinking hey, here. Hey, there you go. Your blanket will make you extra comfy. There's lots of blood you coughed. Way lots. <laughs> and, and it almost looks like our house. Oh but gosh. I can kind of see the uncles with Grampy and Dad there. I'll try to find some water to clean it up. <laughs> oh no. Uh, oh no. What the crap? What, what, what happened? <gasps> what the crap? <gasps> what the heck? <gasps> Oracle gaze into mine crimson my asthma. Thine Vader What bear desiccated on the rocks by thy hand the abbot will know of two. I Damnation. holy crap the things that intense opens, his sweat will feed and warm her gullet. The abbot will know the patriarch in mastering Luna ends hamstrung. Oh he my gosh. Death upon his flesh, but no mercy shall be given, for none he hath gave. The rising grave shall signal war's end. War and triumph, the abbot will know from them bloodshed. Armageddon My gosh. All. Thai, kindred, Daru, milklings, Elohim. In the light, they all will. Mm. Oh, no. Hello, boy. Have you finished storing the dead boars? Horse! Boy, no sounds over 90 decibels outside of combat. <laughs> horse! Ah, horse. Dad, Good to see you're up and about. Dad, 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 Are you dad, feeling better? Dad, 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 we, we talk. Horse, he talks. Oh my Calm gosh. Now, boy. It is almost 12 a.m. Eastern Standard. Well past your bedtime. I will return once I put boy to bed, horse. Uh, oh my gosh, that poor kid. Again, boy? Not good. No stiff drinks before bed, young man. No, oh, but look. It stopped raining. Now we get to enjoy the smell of wet forest. Maybe we'll see a rainbow tomorrow. Come. What the heck? Oh my gosh! You have listened to an audio drama by Ogre Poppinang with voice work by Speaker D as Big D. I do have Thunder to say, Cyker I like how as in like Zagram as Marcus, obviously it would be inhuman, but I like how inhuman the voice was. How as boy and forced McKenzie the language seemed to be. Horse. Background art by Inktooth and avatar art by Rude Rubicante, Off Hawker, 
Elephus and Garrett. Soundtrack by Macker. Sound composition by Carl the Deranged. Mixing <laughs> by String Great Store. name. Animation by Carl the Deranged. Video composition by Alpha Booza with the lead writers. Blessed. Uh, wait. Blessed. Um, hang on. Uh, Blessed wrote this? What? How? <laughs> but, but he's the funny guy we always credit as a joke. What? <laughs> uh, that's so weird. Well, uh, good job, Blessed. Uh, <laughs> you did good. Um, Interesting. Anyway, um, script editing by Alpha Booza and Speaker D. Special thanks for this episode is dedicated to Blessed's dog, Lucy. Aww. Rest in peace, you good girl. Aww. Portions That's sad. of the materials are the copyrights and trademarks of Paradox Interactive AB and are used with permission. All rights reserved. For more information, please visit worldofdarkness.com. Visit patreon.com slash alphabooza for updates every other week. Thank you for listening, and good evening. I'm just waiting to see if there's anything after this. Because there usually is. Yep. Yeah. Oh. What is this? What the? The boy he was cornered, the cliff made him stuck. By his grandma with the crossbow, would push you out of luck. The shadow of the frame was blocking out the sun. I actually really like this. Odd, but I like it. Grandma, she was pissed, got up on her feet. The boy only ran as fast as he can, pushing his way through the branches and plants. It all seemed to bleak when he came to a creek. The water was deep, and he started to swim. Behind him, he heard Grandma's howling. He made it across and looked at his grandma. She could not flow. She was building a boat. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. All right. Well, that that was good. Long, but good. I enjoyed it. So let's see who. But I I've enjoyed everything they've done so so far. Oh, Captain, here we go on a 
very nice.